The sun has set, the air is cold, something moves beyond the clearing. A faint whisper, a heavy footstep, something's getting close. But have no fear, you should be safe, the campfire is going strong. Gather round, but be warned, they come before dawn. Good evening, dear listeners, and welcome to They Come Before Dawn. I am your host, Lawrence. And I am your co-host, Ray. On this night's episode, we'll be talking about the Subberton Man. Good evening, Ray. Hello, Lawrence. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm... Yeah, I'm good. I'm good as well. Yeah? I'm a bit nervous because you wanted to tell me something. Yeah. Something specifically that you kept on the episode. Indeed. Something about your house? Exactly. Now, this is this is probably gonna be a part one, because I don't know the details yet. So in the last episode about the Winchester house, we talked about, you know, secret rooms and yeah. stuff. And um, I mentioned that I'm moving soon. I did I mention it? Yeah, I, think I, I mentioned that you did. And it would be so funny to find a secret room. Well, guess what? You found a secret I room. I found a secret room. If you mean... Okay, <laughs> you found a secret room. I did. So but you're, you're, the sale isn't fine. I mean, you're, you're gonna buy the house, but you're not yeah. currently. We're not access- official owners yeah. yet. You're not. Indeed. You don't have access to the house. Exactly. Yet. Yeah. So um, I mean, we we did have access. So we had the keys because some workers had yeah. to come. Um, previous owners don't live there yet anymore. No, no, they don't. Okay. So um, we're not able to access the secret room yet. I'm not sure if I. I mean, I guess I do want to. It's just, it's gonna be disgusting. It's probably gonna be full of spiders. Yeah. Um, but it is something that, yeah, we are going to do once we move in. Okay, but... Okay, so... Yeah, I have, yeah. What the hell? What secret room? Okay, so... Um, there was someone um, who needed to come for the roof to check, you know, for yeah. the roof. And we, my, my boyfriend and I, were there um, a little bit earlier. And we're just like saying, oh, it's actually not a really big roof. Um, It's probably not going to cost that much. And then suddenly my boyfriend turns around and he says, there's another roof over there on top of like where the kitchen is. So the kitchen and bathroom is like, if the house would be a square, the bathroom and kitchen are like like a side building, but still attached to the house. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. I, I don't know if I can explain it better. So in my mind, how I remembered it, the roof was flat, but... Turns a out it's not. single roof, but it's not a single roof. It's it's not. It's a rectangular roof, you know, yeah. like a roof roof. So we were like, huh? Then what is above the kitchen? And we were like, okay, you know, probably nothing. So we went downstairs and then I looked in the kitchen and I saw in the ceiling. I, I mean, I didn't really look at the ceiling before. I saw in the yeah. ceiling a square. A trap door. Cut out wow so we can access it so there's probably like an an attic above yeah a Uh, separate attic above the kitchen exactly like a really small attic i mean there's probably nothing there but insects but but you're not sure you you haven't accessed it yet no i mean has anyone accessed it since it was built in 1932 I mean, you're gonna keep us updated. I definitely so will. So I'm very curious. I definitely will. Maybe we can do this for our YouTube Maybe, channel. Yeah, perhaps we can film it. We'll yeah. see what we do with it. Mm-hmm. We could always make a shitty TikTok about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Secret room in the house, and it's obviously nothing. Then. I mean, obviously, I was gonna put it on TikTok, but we can also <laughs> put it on. <laughs> on TikTok. We don't even have a TikTok yet. No, but I have a TikTok. Oh, I'm just gonna oh, put, it put it on my TikTok. On TikTok. Okay. But we can put it on our YouTube channel. Yeah, it w- would be interesting if. Oh man, what could be there? Oh. Just your oh. wildest imagination. What would, what could be there? Treasures. Treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Gold. Oh, imagine like a secret diary or something, you know? Yeah, perhaps there are some storage space and yeah, some old books would be cool. I mean, 1932, that was before the war, the, the second war, so maybe... There have been more wars, but you meant I mean, the World, world, world War, obviously. Yeah. When I say the war, I mean the World yeah. War. <laughs> and these parts of the world where we live, the war 
is means a, the means world war. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm gonna guess there's nothing up there, but yeah, it would be cool. Sad thing is, we won't move in until December, January, so it will be quite it a long will wait. Be quite a while. <laughs> yeah, but you'll maybe. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how soon you'll open the secret yeah. attic. <laughs> So, oh, that there's, was a... there's another thing we should say. You have been hearing strange things in the audio quality. Exactly. Um, so, one of our viewers pointed this out on listeners. episode two. We don't have viewers. I mean, I meant listeners. Yeah. <laughs> 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 listeners <laughs> pointed this out. Uh, in episode two, you can hear a... Like, it sounds like this. No, don't, oh, don't, don't, hit, don't hit the table. <laughs> So it sounds like a... A knocking. A knocking. That was the word yeah. I was looking for. A, a sort of a, a third. Yeah. A, a, a sort of banging. So we try to pay attention like that we are not moving yeah. too much. That we're not slamming our elbows on the table. Yeah, exactly. Or... But it seems that the knocking sound, the mysterious knocking sound. Yeah. The mysterious the knocking mysterious noise. The mysterious knocking sound. <laughs> the mysterious knocking noise. <laughs> um, it's still there. So... We're not quite sure where it comes from. You hear it. I have heard it in the times you pointed it out. But I don't hear it when I'm just regularly listening to the episode or if I'm editing. Yeah, so, but like you use earbuds. regular earbuds. Yeah. And I have like a all surround yeah. you have headphone. A, you have better quality yeah. <laughs> audio equipment exactly. than I do. So that's why I hear it probably better yeah. than you. But the sound is there. It will probably be there in this episode. So we're sorry. We are figuring out <laughs> what we're it is. Into it. Uh, but we literally have no clue what it is. Okay. So we just wanted to point it out. And with that, I Perhaps. think we can yeah. start with the... Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, let's just begin with the obvious. The Summerton Man is a... Oh, you're just gonna start? No, no, no. <laughs> no don't go to. I'm just trying to formulate the words in my head. Okay. The Summerton Man mystery is a thing that I researched. You had nothing to do with this. No, that's right. Um, we you... ended. We ended last week's episode, and amongst ourselves, we just spoke about the next episode. And I asked you, do you know what the Summerton Man is? And you said that you had no clue no. so I decided to do to make an executive decision <laughs> and uh, I told you don't research anything the audio the outro I made because if our listeners might have recognized that you always do the outros mm -hmm. and now it was me yeah and I and yeah. you have uh, I have told you don't listen to the outro don't look at anything from this uh, mystery and I did not listen so. yeah so you have no idea what the Summerton man is no I thought it was a serial killer but yeah. then you said nope you don't know anything about it and I was like okay so I guess it's not I don't know I, so I you... guess it is but I don't know what it I don't know so let's just begin with the Summerton man mystery and I'm very interested in what your opinions are mm -hmm. what you think about this yeah, this mystery. So, the date is December 1st, 1948. Mm -hmm. Somerton Park Beach in Adelaide, South Australia. Oh, it's, it's in Australia. It's in Australia. <laughs> okay. The body of an unidentified man is found sitting on the beach. He was lying with his head against the beach wall, his legs extended and his feet crossed. Well, just mimic it. Like this. Oh. So he's lying with his back to uh, the beach wall. The beach has a steep wall. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what he... Yeah, yeah he was lying against the rocks. Yeah, I can imagine. Something. A position that looks quite similar to someone sleeping. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He had on his person an unused second-class rail ticket from Adelaide to Henley Beach. It's a suburb of Adelaide, so it was just a small trip. Mm -hmm. A bus ticket that was not used. A United States manufactured aluminum, alum, alumin, aluminium, aluminum, 
Some people say it's aluminum, other people say it's aluminium. But since we say aluminium in Dutch, let's go for aluminium. Okay, so <laughs> a US manufactured aluminium comb. A half empty packet of juicy fruit chewing gum. It's an American brand. I couldn't find out if it was sold inside Australia. I did not know that chewing gum already existed in 1948. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I didn't really pay it any any attention, <laughs> but now that you mention it, I have no idea when chewing gum was invented. Me neither. <laughs> okay. Uh, he had a army club cigarette packet on him, mm-hmm. which is a British brand, but the cigarette package contained seven cigarettes from a different brand. The brand oh. was Kensitas, and it's a Scottish brand. And he had a quarter full box of Bryant and May matches, which is also a British ma- ma- brand. Okay. It's quite important that I say which um, countries it's originated from. Mm-hmm. It might come back in the story. Yeah, because I'm, I'm wondering if it's that uncommon for an Australian man in that... Like it in is 1948. Is it that uncommon to have it is, American and British spies? It stands out. Really? Yeah, he stood oh. out. Oh. The image that I've hopefully created at the moment, is there's a dead man lying on the beach. He is dressed in a very fancy suit and very fancy. And he has effects on him that aren't Australian, but a mismatch of different uh, yeah. nationalities. So yeah, American stuff and British stuff. So a few witnesses had seen the Somerton man, because we're gonna call him the Somerton man from now on. This 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 body body is this man is the Somerton man. Oh. <laughs> he is who okay. we're gonna talk about. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. So the Somerton man is not a serial killer. Right? No, he He's is not a serial killer. He is probably the victim. Okay, I'm not gonna say. No, anything. just just <laughs> I'll, I'll just hold on for a bit. Hold on for a bit. So uh, a few witnesses had seen the Somerton man the evening before, which would be uh, November 30th, 1948. A couple had seen the Somerton man at 7 p.m. and they saw him extend his right arm to his fullest and then drop it limply. John Lyons went with his wife on a walk on the beach when he saw the Somerton man sitting against the beach wall. Mm-hmm. So it is the position that he was found. This was around 7 p.m. on November 30th. At 6.50 a.m. the next morning, so yeah. December 1st, John went on an early morning swim. He met a friend after he finished swimming. And together they noticed a group of men gathering around the Somerton man. Mm -hmm. John went over to get with his friend, affirmed that the Somerton man was dead, and so he then he went home to call the police. Oh, I mean there were no cell phones. You had to. There were no, not many phones, so you had to go home to use your phone. That's crazy, actually. Yeah, for it's bizarre for us, but (laughs) it was it was how everything went. Uh, the Somerton man was taken in an ambulance to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it's something you have to do. Yeah. Um, pathologist John Burton Cleland described the man as such, and I quote, The man was of Britisher appearance and thought to be aged about 40-45. He was in top physical condition. He was 180 centimeters tall, with grey eyes, fair to ginger colored hair, slightly gray around the temples, with broad shoulders and a narrow waist, hands and nails that showed no signs of manual labor, big and little toes that met in a wedge shape, like those of a dancer or someone who wore boots with pointed toes, Mm -hmm. pronounced high calf muscles consistent with people who regularly wore boots or shoes with high heels or performed performed ballet okay. and end quote. So the Somerton man was dressed in a white shirt. He had a red, white and blue tie, brown trousers, socks and shoes, a brown knitted pullover and a fashionably gray and brown double breasted jacket of American tailoring. So he was dressed 
like an American would be dressed at that time. Hmm. That's odd. I'll show you a picture of the Somerton man. Oh. This was a picture taken of him. We'll put it on the Instagram as well. Can we do that? It's cool. I mean, it's just a bad man. So... It won't Instagram delete. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, there's a picture of him when he... Uh, a picture that they taken from him in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And here's a... And here's the picture that they reconstructed yeah. um, of him. He, he looks like alive. a wealthy American man. He's, he's, a, he's, he's a very handsome man. I think he's I a mean, very handsome yeah, man. I mean, yeah, I guess he's... Yeah. If I were his age, I would probably also think he was handsome. Yeah, so he's... I'll put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> he looks 40 to 45, I think. I would they're, say... They're not older, that far off with their but, estimation. Yeah. And you also <laughs> see his tie. It's also the correct color. Yeah, exactly. His clothes had no labels on him. He did not carry a hat, and he had no wallet with him. Hmm. So these might be strange statements for us, but, no, but you have then. to... No? Back then, everyone wore a hat, right? Yeah, <laughs> everyone wore a hat at no. that time, so a man walking around without a hat stood out. Mm -hmm. His clothes had no labels. That's something that I want to explain a little bit more. Um, nowadays, our clothes are very um, mass-produced. Yeah. So every article of clothing is pro is practically the same. It doesn't really matter if you lose like a scarf or something, or if you lose a, sh a shirt. Mm. At that time, mass production of clothing wasn't that far advanced as it is now. Yeah. So every single item that was made had a label on them. I, I read that um, the labels always stayed on because if you had a coat, like say a Gucci coat, I don't know if Gucci existed then, but you have a, a very expensive coat yeah. and you want to sell that coat, if it had the original label on them, you could be 100% certain that the clothing was authentic and original. Oh yeah, but that's still with lots of brand clothing. Yeah, uh, is it? Oh like, yeah, yeah. I actually found a. Um, if you go to a thrift thrift store. Yeah, I found a, a secondhand Dolce and Gabbana um, a turtleneck uh, oh, sweater. Yeah. For uh, 10, 10 euros. Oh, ten euros. Knew you would pay like four hundred. Yeah, that's euros. not a lot. <laughs> ten euros. <laughs> um, so and the label also. I'm not an expert on these things, yeah. but as far as I can tell, the label looks pretty yeah. real. This, so, label the clothing so. had no labels, yeah, is the thing, because uh, labels made it authentic, made yeah. it good for resale. The resale value was good, mm -hmm. was better if it, it didn't have a label. But you did say that um, the jacket was of American tailoring, how would they know without labels? The way his clothing was stitched mm -hmm. was a way of stitching that was only done in America. Oh. It wasn't the stitching that it was um, uh, Australian. Damn, that's yeah. very specific. Yeah. Wow. It really was that specific. Damn. I'm, I'm it was impressed. a sort of, uh, I believe, a sort of V-shape that they mm -hmm. stitched and that wasn't something that was done in Australia. Huh. Okay. Yeah. So even though it was so long ago, it was in 1948, mm -hmm. It was really remarkable how they deciphered these things and how figured they, these things out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, nice. Also, no labels meant that there wasn't an identification of him because most people at that time used the label to write their name on. Oh yeah. You know, as kids, yeah. When, when we go to school and we had our our gym uniform. Exactly. Our your mom and my mom did as well. I I assume that your mom did it as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you wrote your name on it? Indeed. They did that at that time too. Yeah. But with every article of clothing. Yeah. An autopsy was conducted on him. Mm -hmm. And the pathologist who did the autopsy um, estimated the following. And I quote. The heart was of normal size and normal in every way. Small vessels not commonly observed in the brain were easily discernible with congestion. There was congestion of the pharynx. Pharynx, yeah. There was congestion of the pharynx and the gullet was covered with whitening of superficial layers of the mucosa 
with a patch of ulceration in the middle of it. The stomach was deeply congested. There was congestion in the second half of the duodenum. There was blood mixed with the food in his stomach. Both kidneys were congested and the liver contained a great excess of blood in its vessels. The spleen was strikingly large, about three times normal size. There was destruction of the center of the liver lobulus, revealed under the microscope. Acute gastric hemorrhaging, extensive congestion of the liver and spleen, and congestion to the brain. End quote. Damn. A lot of information, yeah. a lot of medical terms. Every single time they say congestion, it's just uh, the blood that's in the veins that hardens. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. That's congestion. That okay. Um, and is that the congestion of the pharynx? Uh, the gullet was covered with whitening of superficial layers of the mucosa with a patch of ulceration in the middle of it. It's the um, the gullet, the stomach, uh, yeah. the intestines. It's at the beginning of the intestines, I believe, is the gullet uh, was uh, ruptured. I, it had the inner lining of the gullet came loose, and there was a little tear in it. That's just what that means. I believe that all these things I said aren't really that uncommon. It's not really something that I you can point ask. at and say he had a heart attack or he uh, died of a stroke. Mm -hmm. All these things doesn't point that way. I was gonna ask, like, when you die, like, I, I have, I'm not entirely sure what happens to your body when you die. Like, so I was wondering, like, yeah. the hardening of the blood is... Yeah, the hardening of the blood is normal. It's normal, um, okay. Like, the hemorrhaging and the excess of blood, that's all pretty normal. Yeah. Because, yeah, where did, where would it go? He had no outdoor marks of he had any cuts or he had mm -hmm. any... Um, he wasn't strangled, anything along those lines. It was just a man who lied down and died. That was how all of it looked. Um, except for the few curious remarks that yeah. the label were gone and he was missing a hat, his wallet... Maybe uh, it could have been that his corpse was robbed after he died, but then again, why would the labels be missing? He also didn't, I mean, if he had his wallet on him, he really didn't look disturbed or anything. I mean, mm. he wasn't rolled over. Yeah, yeah, true. He did look like he was robbed, he just didn't have any identification on him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, the time of death was estimated at around 2 a.m. on December 1st. So he was found at 7 a.m. Time of death was on yeah. December 1st? Yeah. And uh, the one person saw him on November yeah. 30th? So, no, yeah, November 30th is the day before December 1st. So he was already lying there when he was Well, there. if the people who saw him on November 1st, uh, November 30th, they saw him when he was still alive. He was actually still alive. They estimated that he died at 2 a.m. Why? So he was actually lying there. So you know, alive. the couple who saw him raise his hand and drop it. Yeah. Well, obviously he was still alive at that time. A couple hours later, he died. Oh yeah, yeah. He, he raised so his he, hand. So he was already in a position that he died in. That is so weird. It's a so he was probably waiting for help or something. That's not, it's a, an assumption you can make. Yeah. We can be certain. I mean, yes, or. It might oh. be, it might be very weird at the time. It gets weird. Okay. I believe the, the way they checked to, to make the estimation of 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. was by um, measuring the rigor mortis. I've told you what rigor mortis was. It's the stiffening of the corpse. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently, I think they checked his ears by how stiff his ears are. I read that really fast. I, I, I saw that really fast somewhere and thought maybe it's an interesting thing to bring up. Yeah. Could not. Could just be bullshit. Um, we 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 are not experts. No, we are not experts. So <laughs> the pathologist concludes. I am quite convinced the death could not have been natural. The poison, I suggest, was barbiturate, barbiturate or a soluble hypnotic. So the pathologist who did the autopsy yeah. believes that the Samaritan man was poisoned. Poisoned, okay. Yeah. 
by um, like a barbiturate. I believe that a barbiturate is a very strong painkiller. And mm -hmm. I believe that hypnotics are what is used in anesthesia. Okay. Among other things. Mm -hmm. It's also, uh, I think, a combination of barbiturate and hypnotics is what um, is modern day execution with uh, an injection. I believe that that's all, those two are um, present yeah. in that cocktail. Because it's a, a cocktail, one drug that makes you fall asleep, another that stops your heart, stops your breathing. Okay, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't know. Yeah, I don't <laughs> really know that much about it either. <laughs> yeah, I guess poison is, is a logical yeah. one for this one, I guess. Yeah, I believe that, um, I'm not quite sure, but like spleen, being strikingly large, I think that's one of the things that is very um, striking about poison. And also mm -hmm. um, the liver being filled yeah. with blood. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I'm not quite sure. I don't know anything about poisoning. Yeah, me neither. And I don't know anything about uh, autopsy, anatomy. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. So <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> good good uh, subject we chose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So his body was embalmed a few days later on December 10th. This is apparently a practice that the police uses when they are unable to make a positive identification. Hmm. This was, however, the first time such an action was needed. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. But it, it's not the first um, John Doe out there. Yeah. Why was this one? I don't really know if it's the first. I, obviously, it's not the first one, but I think that they, the whole embalmment process was it was the first time it was okay. used. They probably did other things to other missing persons and ident unidentified oh, yeah. okay. people before that. Mm -hmm. okay. At the Adelaide railway station on the 14th of January 1949, so a month and a half later, Staff found a brown suitcase. Ooh. It was checked in after 11 a.m. on November 30th. Mm -hmm. So that would be before eight hours before the couple. I will just use the couple who saw him wave on the. Mm -hmm. I mean, wave. It's not really waving that he did, but, but yeah, that couple. Mean. It's a couple hours before they saw him at the beach. Mm -hmm. The suitcase had no labels on it. Hmm. So modern, in modern day we have, uh, if you use an airplane, they put yeah. a, a plastic label or a, just a tie on it. It's really easy. At that time, labels were pasted and gl or glued onto a suitcase. Oh. And that is very difficult to remove. Because they're literally, with a very strong glue, they're glued onto a suitcase. Why would they do that? Ruin the suitcase. Yeah, yeah. But if you had a suitcase which was used for travel without labels on it, you had to painstakingly remove the labels by probably using a sponge, water, yeah. soaking it, taking little pieces off, soaking it. So the fact that it had no labels on it is also pretty weird. Yeah. The suitcase contained the following. And there's a whole list of it. So okay, so it's a big suitcase. It's, a, it's just a... Well, well, you'll see. So it had a red checked dressing gown, red felt slippers, four pairs of undergarments, pajamas, four pairs of socks, shaving kit, light brown trousers with sand in the cuffs. That's just... That's, that's important. Just wait. A screwdriver, a cut-down table knife, a stenciling brush, a pair of scissors, a sewing, a sewing kit containing, and keep this in mind, orange barber waxed thread, mm -hmm. two ties, three pencils, six handkerchiefs, uh, six pence and coins, a button, a tin of brown shoe polish, scarf, cigarette lighter, eight large envelopes and one small one, uh, one piece of light cord, a shirt without a name tag, um, one yellow coat shirt, two airmail stickers, an eraser, one front collar stud, 
one pack color stud and a toothbrush and a toothbrush and toothpaste. Okay. So it was all the items is someone who's traveling yeah. for a few days. It's exactly. a regular suitcase. Huh. A few important things to remember and to explain. A stenciling brush, you probably know what a stenciling brush is. No, I, don't I know. didn't know it either before I researched this. A stenciling I, mean, I probably know, I just don't know in English. Or would I explain it to me? <laughs> Tell me if you know. A stenciling brush is an instrument used by officers on merchant ships. It's for stenciling uh, cargo. At, because like cargo is, yeah, just riding on the, on oh. cargo. Because um, cargo, apparently you had to be pretty smart to be an officer on a ship who deals with cargo. Because you have to, yeah, the ship has to be uh, level. You can't put all cargo yeah, on the left yeah, side of the yeah, ship, yeah, yeah. obviously. But it, it, it had to do with physics, it had to do with math. Yeah. You really had to be pretty smart to, um, to do this no. job. The orange wax thread, the barber thread, mm -hmm. is very important and it is actually what links the suitcase to the Summerton Man. Mm -hmm. Because of that wax thread, they believe that the suitcase is the Summerton Man's. Okay. It is not a thread that is available in Australia and it's the same thread that was used to repair the lining in one of the pockets of the pants that the Summerton Man was wearing. Mm -hmm. So there was a hole in his pants yeah. and it was fixed with that specific with that thread. Okay, then, yeah, I mean, obviously it's his suitcase. Yeah. His light brown trousers with sand in the cuffs. That's a weird one. That's a weird one. And it it gives a suggestion that perhaps the Somerton man wore that pair of trousers, went to a beach or the beach that he, f uh, that he was found, and then went back to his suitcase and changed into another pair of pants. But and then he went back to the beach. If hmm. that would be the case, nobody knows why. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's a weird thing. It is. Apparently there was also the name Keen, K-E-A-N-E, -E, that was found on a tie, a laundry bag, and on a singlet. However, a search was uh, conducted and no one with the name Keen was found missing in any English-speaking country. Okay. But it's not because he's in Australia and he's wearing American and British stuff that he is necessarily using the, English. Yeah, or the using a or, correct name. Yeah, that, or he could be an uh, immigrant from somewhere else in Europe or something. Yeah, could be valid. Yeah. Could be valid. Uh, I mean, could be valid. Yeah. An inquest was done a few days after the discovery of the body and a few new discoveries were made. So it is noted that the Summerton man's shoes were clean and appeared to have been polished recently. And this evidence fits in a theory that the body may have been brought to the Summerton Park beach after his death. So because his shoes were clean yeah. and still polished yeah some people think that he was killed somewhere else and then placed there mm. there was also an eyewitness account who said that she saw two men carrying another well-dressed man but i didn't find anything more except just a small footnote about that and like i also think it's like a thing when media releases information like that like for like it's possible that the something yeah, yeah, is yeah, I believe killed it is. somewhere else yeah. there's somewhere somewhere is going to be mean. like oh but yeah i saw yeah. it it's it, not real it's all it's always there's a lot of tips that roll in mm. with uh, police investigations where this just false leads yeah. or just made up exactly and it was in this case as well there yeah. were a lot of false leads because, I mean, there was already the witnesses who saw him mm -hmm. wave, that was not a probably wave. But. There was also no evidence of vomiting or convulsions mm -hmm. on him, so which are 
two main reactions to poison. Mm -hmm. So if you're poisoned, your body, the first thing it does is vomiting. Mm -hmm. It's just a natural reaction. He didn't have anything. It wasn't the case with the Savage yeah. Man. Around the same time of the inquest, a tiny piece of rolled up paper was found in one of the Somerton man's pants pockets. Mm -hmm. okay. On the paper was printed the words Taman Shut. Oh. It's translated from Persian. It means ended or finished. So if you, it's uh, also, Taman Shut is also synonymous with Somerton man. Sometimes you'll see Somerton man, yeah, sometimes you'll see Taman Shut case. case. Yeah. So, Oh, Taman Shoot is not a name. No. I thought it was a name. It's a where it's just Persian for ended or finished. Oh. Okay, well th then it's clear. Let's see. Okay. These words can be found on the last page of the Rubiyat of Omar Khayyam. It's a translated poetry book. Okay. So it's literally on the last page of that book. Yeah. It's Taman Shoot. And oh, yeah, the, okay, yeah. the feeling that I got is that Taman should in this situation is like how you know how they ended old movies with fan or the end. The end. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's that's yeah. that's the feeling that I got. With it. It's probably that's what the, was for the poetry book. You know, it was I mean, probably yeah. the end of the poetry yeah. book. Yeah, that's the thing that I got. But nowhere does anyone say that. Oh. Does anyone say that that's the case? Oh. They all say it's the last word in the book. It means ended or finished. No one says, oh, it probably means that it's just the end of the book. Yeah. But it doesn't really matter, actually. <laughs> but it's just a weird thing. Yeah. So now it's the end of his life. Could be. It's ended. It's finished. The job is done. Perhaps. That's what I'm thinking. It's Perhaps. A you're. Hit. It's a... The thing that's starting to brew in your mind at this moment is a theory that's very prevalent mm -hmm. okay. in this case. So, obviously this was a huge clue, so the police started looking for that specific book with the, pe with the piece torn out of. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was actually a, a piece of the book. I thought it was a piece of paper written. No, no, no. It, was it actually, it actually was a piece oh. of, a, of a single book. Oh, she, oh, she says, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. So I told you it would get weirder and weirder. Yeah. Yeah. We're not there yet. Okay. It still needs to get more weird. All right. So Ron, Ronald Francis found the book and turned it into the police. So the actual book was found. Oh, that was... When? When, uh, I believe, a couple of weeks later. That's fast. But more on that in a bit. Okay. Yeah, more on that in a bit. Almost as it wants to be found. Yeah. So, Detective <laughs> Sergeant Lionel Lean used pseudonyms for public statements to protect the witness's privacy. Yeah. So, Ronald Francis has never been officially identified because Ronald Francis is a pseudonym. Yeah, okay. So, we don't really know the validity of this find. We don't know who actually found the book. Yeah. There are multiple stories of how the book was found. One says that the book was found, and I quote, just after that man was found on the beach at Summerton. End quote. What? <laughs> what a weird accent was that? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> what? Did I just start speaking Irish? <laughs> I don't know what accent it was, but uh, it was something. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with me? Let's just keep that in. Let's yeah. just keep that in. So just after that man was found on the beach at Summerton, so it's very specific, which mm -hmm. means that the book was found uh, probably a couple hours later or a day later. Okay. Another says that the book was found in an unlocked car part in Jetty Road, Glenelg. Glen Glenelg? Yeah, Glenelg. And even then, either in the rear floor well or on the back seat. So the book was found in a car? In a car, in a... I believe that that Jetty Road was a, f a couple of meters, I mean a few hundred meters mm. farther away. Okay. Yeah. In the book that has been found, which 
was identified as the correct book mm -hmm. because it had the words Taman shirt ripped out. Yeah, the, the, the piece of paper. Yeah. yeah. There were faint indentations on that book. As if someone had wrote something down and used the book as a hard surface to put paper on. Oh, okay, I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. So, a code. A code that has not been cracked to this day. Okay, I'll show you the code. Okay, I'm gonna crack it. No, I won't. <laughs> this is the code. That is exactly That's what was exactly written exactly what was book. written there. M... M or W? Mm, wait, can I see that closer? Oh, I can... It's probably a W because there are two similar M's here which do not look like that one, so that's probably a W. Could be. Let's be honest, it just looked like a random... Taman... Taman... <laughs> something... I'm You're going really for this! <laughs> It hasn't been cracked to this day, and there's been a lot of people who tried to crack this. I have no clue how to crack codes, it's but I always try. <laughs> it's just a random jumble of letters. It's not a random jumble of letters. It's, it's a meaning. It just looks like a random jumble of mm -hmm. letters, to be honest. This line, the second line, has been scratched through. Yeah. It just has been deliberately. There's also been this symbol which no one knows exactly what that means. It's just a line with a cross through. Okay, but that could be ink spill. Oh, no, I mean, an ink spill in a in indentation. Mm? Ink spill in an indentation. But oh. they probably, so these no letters yeah. were indented into the paper. Yeah. They probably put a paper on it and just used the scratch method yeah. so they could see what letters but were how indented. The, the the indentation happened because they someone put a piece put of paper, paper on and then it, wrote it. Yeah, but that so piece of paper is not in existence anymore. I don't mean ink spill as an ink spill. I mean like some uh, scratched it out. Yeah, like a scratch. Yeah, you know, yeah, something like yeah. that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Trying to say. <laughs> yeah, I I understand. Also, that's oh, it's a W. Damn, good. Well, it is a W. It, it's been unclear if it is an M or a W, but it's widely believed to be W uh, because of the distinct difference, like you say, with the other M's. Mm -hmm. Then there's also the deleted line, the M L I A O I. It's just nobody knows what it is. But look how similar this line, this scratched out line, is to this to the. Like second next one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It could be. Yeah, I know what you mean. I understand what you mean. Mm -hmm. It's just it hasn't been cracked. That's insane. And police have tried to crack this, and yeah. How can you not crack? Like, I mean, the zodiac's code isn't cracked today. The zodiac. The zodiac. Zodiac killer. Oh, I heard about that, but yeah. I don't know the... Well, the Zodiac Killer also Zodiac. led a few um, decoded coded messages. He famously killed, and I believe they found some uh, coded messages of his, and mm -hmm. the coded messages were, to this day, not yet been deciphered. A few of them have oh. been. A few of them have been. I believe... I believe... I don't want to be... I believe two of them have been deciphered. And I believe that the first one was done by the police, and the second one has been done by, I think, a high school teacher and her husband, who decided yeah. one day to just try to crack the That's code, insane. and they actually did it. Wow. Yeah. The only thing I can imagine is the person who wrote that, it, he remembered letters in his head for other letters. For example, he would use the, uh, the letter M, for an A, oh, but yeah. only he remembered what letter he Yeah, used. only he had the cipher. So that is, yeah. that would be pretty impossible to crack, I Yeah, think. that is correct. Maybe not, maybe it was something, saying it, something super dumb. But yeah, it could just be a grocery list. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it could just be a grocery list, but it's, I mean, it's, it's a, pretty bizarre. It's, it's a code that has never been used before, that's for sure. Yeah. Otherwise someone would have been able to crack. By now, so yeah. it's a code that this person it's made up. Probably very unique to him or to his close circle, mm -hmm. if that will be the case. 
probably only him. If he didn't, if more people knew about it. If he wrote it down. Not because he he had the, the, the no. I'm just talking about the, the person who wrote it down. Yeah. Okay. I thought you meant no, Summer to Man. I have no, no clue who wrote no. it down. I'm I the person neither who wrote do it. I. Neither do I. That's insane. Yeah. I want to write the code. I want to know what it means, but I can't write code. So. So I've been thinking about something else about the code. The like, if you try to crack a code, you think in English, right? Yeah. But. The name that you mentioned before? Tamashut is in Persian. No, well, that was Persian. So the whole book was Persian. Yeah. But there was another name. You said K. Yeah. Kim. Um, the. Kim. It was Kim. Kim. You said Ki. K E A N E. You, you said. Yeah. So Kim was is the name. The name that was found on, on the tie. the items. Yeah, the tie and the items in a suitcase. Yeah. So, we Which, are not looking at an English code. Yeah, what do you think? In what language would it be then? Either Persian or some whatever has to do with Keen. Keen is a Irish, Gaelic, or Old English uh, of Old uh, English origin. Yeah. So it is kind of related to English, just not modern modern English. Yeah. But Gaelic though. So Persian. Where's Persian? Persia. Iran. Ah, oh, Iran. Oh, I oh. did not know that. Actually. So you it's just not an it's English. It's not in English. I think I think that police would have investigated they that. They probably would, but it could have been in other language as well, you know? Like yeah. But it's a good it's a good theory. I know, right? I think it's very very cool of you to just think about that in like two minutes. We took a two minute break. Yeah, we took a two minute break. I was just looking at the code, like I was just looking at the picture and I was like, but what if it's not in English? Maybe learn a different language and try to Decipher it in that language? Duolingo app. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, no, but either way. So. <laughs> continue. Uh, conti let's continue. Uh, a phone number has also been found in the book. It was a phone number belonging to Jessica Thompson. She's a nurse living in Mosley Street on Glen Elk. It should be about 400 meters away from where the Summerton man was found. Thompson herself has always denied knowing who the Summerton man was, but after her death, she died in 2007 or 2009. Mm -hmm. After her death, her daughter went on Channel 9's 60 Minutes, saying she believed her mother knew the dead man. That was in 2014. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's yeah. That's recent. That's very recent. And I. Th think that might confirm the theory, no, it may probably not confirm yeah. it, but it might add up to the theory um, that he was probably um, killed by a hitman or is yeah. that what I'm saying? An assassin? That? Yeah, an assassin. And this nurse, Jessica, was probably afraid, like, oh my god, maybe they're yeah. coming, coming after me. Or she always made, uh, she always... The media was never able to use her name or her face because she didn't give permission for that. Mm -hmm. Which is for, a reason, for privacy. Yeah. Could just be for privacy, but could also be to protect herself. Mm -hmm. um, there is a theory going around that the Summerton man knew Jessica, knew her very well, and that her, I believe, that they had a child together and. For some, I don't know why they would, that they had a child together and this woman. This woman, yes. Her daughter. No, no, oh. I don't believe it's a daughter. I think it should be her son, but I'm not really that sure. I I looked at it briefly. I didn't find it really that plausible because mm. it's a lot of what ifs and could be's and. I mean. When Jessica was shown a plaster of the Summerton man. This, at the time that he died, a few week, days later, the investigation, after they found her phone number, showed her a plaster of him. A plaster? So a plaster is what they took off his face. Oh, they made a plaster Yeah, they of his also, face. they embalmed his body, yeah. but they later, on a later date, made a, uh, took a plaster of him. Why? I don't know why you should do that, but probably to have a very accurate um, way of identifying 
for identification it's, purposes. It's for identification okay. purposes. I figured because uh, even an embalmed even an embalmed body. Yeah, obviously still. Yeah, kind of composes yeah. decomposes. So they took a plaster of him. Uh, I saw the plaster. They took the plaster of him um, when he was already. Yeah, of course he started decomposing, but his skin was very sagging, mm. and he looked older than what he was. I, okay. The pictures I shown, he did look like that on the plaster. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. When Jessica was shown the plaster, she claimed not to know him, but Detective Lee, uh, I told you about Detective Lee, um, he described her reaction as completely taken aback, to the point of giving the appearance that she was about to faint. Yeah. Okay, well, first reactions always Much tell better. a lot. Apparently she didn't want to take a second look. So she didn't, she, yeah, didn't want to take a second look. Mm-hmm. And I believe that they took her for a second time mm-hmm. to look at the plaster and then her reaction was, uh, she also claimed to not know it. Still claimed yeah. to not know it. So, the Somerton man was buried in Adelaide's West Terrace Cemetery. His burial was attended by the Salvation Army, reporters and police. Do you know what the Salvation Army is? Not entirely. It's a Christian church. It's a charity. Oh. It's a charity. You can buy clothes there, secondhand clothes. Really? Yeah, people take stuff that they don't want, give it to the Salvation Army and they sell it at oh. a cheaper price. It's a thrift, sort of like a thrift store. And, and what did they do with Well, the Salvation Army attended his funeral. Oh, attended? Yeah, they attended his funeral because oh, okay. they believed that uh, no man should be buried alone. So there's always... Um, That's not nice. In thing. these cases, there's always um, someone of, from the Salvation Army who attends the Oh, that's funeral. actually pretty nice. Yeah, I thought that was a f- nice yeah, touch as well. I like that. The body, however, has been exhumed. Very recently. Oh, really? 19 May, 2021. Wow. That is literally only... Two months ago. That is exactly two months ago. That is exactly two months ago. What the hell? Police are trying to obtain DNA for further analysis. There are no results known at this time, but obviously we'll keep an eye on this. That is so interesting. That is... is there a reason why they reopened the case? Or I mean, they, I guess they, it was never closed, but it was it went it cold. Wa- it always was an open case, and but it went uh, cold. So. It went cold, obviously. It probably practically went cold the moment they found him. So, um, but what I've read about the new investigation is there was a lot of not outcry, but a lot of interest in the public to know more about this mm-hmm. man. They wanted to exhume his body. The public wanted the police to exhume the body. But I believe the Attorney General is the correct term. I'm not 100% sure. I believe the Attorney General at that time didn't believe that there was enough interest in the, from the public. Mm-hmm. So he didn't want to reopen the case or didn't want to exhume him again. Recently, there's been a different uh, Attorney General and she has said okay. she gave permission for the exhumation. That's insane. Apparently, it was quite difficult to get him. There was a, apparently a very... Um, he was buried uh, in He was buried, obviously, he was buried in Australia, and in, in a, as I said, Adelaide's West Terrence Cemetery. Oh, but yeah, okay. the, the ground was very clay-like, so oh, it was no. difficult it to... It was literally difficult. Yeah, it was okay, literally difficult to get. Because it was in another country or something like that. No, okay, no, it was, was literally, literally difficult to get him oh, out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to say, like, in the episode with the vampires, we said that it's very disrespectful to exhume a body. I do want to note that this is quite a... This is a different case. A different case because this might bring peace to family, maybe his ghost, I don't know. This might, this sol- just might just solve the case. Yeah, this is different, so just yeah. put that out I've there. Also, <laughs> it will take some time. Yeah. I believe okay. that they estimate that the investigation will take about a year. Okay. So, so we'll t- we will come back to you in a year. <laughs> yeah, that would Probably. be that would be very cool. And Damn, at yeah. this time next year, they they suspect that it will probably be in September next year. Even. So mm-hmm. it'll be more than a year. a year. Yeah. Wow, that, that's quite difficult to put 
a time timestamp to like put a time on that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, we are going yeah. to solve this in a year. I it mean, could just probably not, maybe not. I don't yeah. know. I, mean, I also I believe like you know twenty three and me. Do I know that? It's a um, it's a service, an American service, I believe, mm -hmm. and they uh, sell these heritage kits. It's it's a tube. You have to fill it with your spit. Oh, I know what you mean. It, yeah. Okay, yeah, I didn't know the name no, of it, but it, you're a different place. Yeah, and I believe that there, if you wanted to know about your invest your DNA and your where yeah. you're from, it'll take about two months, I believe. Something like, something like two months. And then you have a results, and it's with a data database, and they actually, sometimes you can find people who are in your family who you don't know in yeah. your family. You can find like a lost great grandfather or exactly. like a cousin twice removed. I would love yeah, to I do want, something like I that. I want to do that as well. Expensive. Yeah, it's, I, think I mean, it's two hundred euros or something. Yeah, it's expensive, but it's. I don't think it's too expensive. No, but I think it's expensive, and you still aren't that sure if it's that trustworthy. I think. Mm, I, well, I, I think it's trustworthy. It's just they they look into yeah. your DNA. I I really want to I really want to know. Like, they give you a result of how many percentages, like West, you're twenty percent Western European, you're fifteen percent Sub Saharan African. You're, That's you something are that is really interesting. North European. Yeah, I'll probably, probably. West, yeah, North European. I have no clue what I would be. Yeah, but they go into quite a bit of detail and mm. that's something that's, that I'm very interested nice. in. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> there are some theories of who the summer to man is. Okay. Supposedly, he was an Australian army lieutenant named Alf Boxall. He had given his copy of the Rubiat to Jessica. Mm -hmm. This man did that uh, during World War II because Jessica was a nurse during World War II. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. However, uh, Boxall was found in July 1949 in Sydney. He was still alive. Oh. And the final page of his copy of the Rubiat was still intact. Okay. There is also a theory that the Summerton Man was a spy. Mm -hmm. And that's probably what you've been thinking. That's what That I've he been was thinking. a spy. And I think most people think he's a spy. It's also when I first heard about um, the Summerton man, that's the first thing I thought as well, that he exactly. was a spy. So, the man was supposedly American, had American and British effects on him. Two locations close to Adelaide were of interest to spies, and his death coincided with the reorganization of Australian security agencies. Mm -hmm. He would have slipped between the cracks, yeah, slipped between the cracks. Oh. Apparently, Alf Boxall was involved in intelligence work, which is also a very interesting thing I found out. Hmm. Um, Wait, Alf Boxall? That yeah, is the first Alf Boxall, the oh. army lieutenant who was yeah. thought to be um, the Summerton man, uh -huh. he was apparently also into intelligence work. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's just an interesting thing. I, I found it very <laughs> yeah. coincidental. Yeah, indeed. Uh, no. The newspaper, The Advertiser, gave the possible identification as. E. C. Johnson. Mm -hmm. The day after this was been printed into the in the advertiser, Johnson himself identified him at a police station. Uh -oh. So the man read that they thought that he was sent to me. Like, uh, I heard, I'll just go to the police and yeah. tell them that I'm still alive. <laughs> uh, he's supposedly a 63 year old woodcutter named Robert Walsh, or he's a missing mining station worker. He could also be a Swedish man. He oh, could, randomly. He could, yeah. be a he could just be a Swedish man. There's a barely a thing in oh, okay. that a case that's been linked with the Summerton man in oh. Sweden. A man who disappeared there. They think he could be this. Oh. Uh, this Swedish man could be the Summerton man. So the code could be Swedish. It could be Swedish. No, it's not Swedish. It does not have. It has the, the O with the yeah. dots on it. No, it's he, not Swedish. He could be H. C. Reynolds. Um, a military ID with a photo issued in the US to a British man was compared to a photo of the Summerton man and they apparently had a close resemblance. Okay, yeah. Both However, have close resemblance. Yeah, yeah. However, searches of the United States National Archives, the United Kingdom National Archives and Australian War Memorial Research Center 
has failed to find any records of H.C. Reynolds. Hmm. Some independent researchers believe the ID card belongs to Horace Charles Reynolds, so H.C. Reynolds, mm-hmm. Horace Charles Reynolds, but he died in 1953, so he can't be the Summerton Man. Oh. Yeah. So a lot of people could be Summerton Man. I think in the first weeks they had 13 possible identifications of who he could be. But yeah, we still don't know to this day That's who he is. The That's the end of the Summerton Man research. Oh wow. There was a lot of stuff I could have gone more deeper into. Or less. Maybe less. Some things were <laughs> maybe a bit exaggerated. I think it was quite. Yeah. But I just thought this case was very interesting. Mm-hmm. And it is one of Australia's biggest mysteries to this day. That's insane. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for. You know, um, not what you thought. Researching this yeah, case, yeah. Uh, and it was actually it was quite a surprise because it was my idea for this episode to take on a true crime yeah. um, case. Yeah, you wanted to do a true crime, yeah, and I exactly. suggested, hey, what about the Summerton Man? So that's why. Are I you just agreed when you didn't know what the Summerton Man was? Yeah, I just Who thought, was? oh, it's a serial killer, but I mean, I guess it, it's true crime. We actually, we, we're not well, sure. Well, he, he has been killed. I mean, he yeah, has. Possibly. There has been a crime committed. Could it have been suicide? There's also people who believe that is suicide. Because I mean, you. Beca- but then because again, the the be rubiat of Omar Kaya, the rubiat, um, it is the general the book. Yeah. It's where the uh, Taman Shud yeah. came out of. It also the general theme of the book. The poems yeah. in the book uh, s- sometimes resemble death, and people believe that this is um, perhaps linked with if he could have committed suicide. Mm-hmm. But how? I, I don't mean, really know how he could have committed suicide then. Yeah, exactly, because he would have had to inject the poison yeah. in another location and then went to the beach. But it kind of looks should, like. Poison doesn't work that way. You can't you can inject. I mean, it doesn't slow really. Poison? I, Isn't there anything like I slow don't poison? really think there's a slow, how would slow poison work. I don't know, like slow poison. You just inject it in your veins and then tell it to just wait. Once it's in your vein, it starts going to your heart and. Okay, but it's but probably with a delayed effect. Yeah, could be, but it could be right because there are certain. Like I'm thinking about certain drugs. Some drugs take effect immediately, and some drugs take effect. Yeah, after if you ingest them. Hence. Ingestion does that, but with medication and yeah, yeah, that's true ingestion. If you inject a medicine, but is it been confirmed it was injected? Well, no, that's that's part of the mystery. They don't know how the poison would have been. I mean, they think he might have in, ingested the poison, mm-hmm. but they also believe that because there was still food in his stomach, the food was they believed ingested two hours before he died mm-hmm. and maybe the food was poisoned they probably would they have checked that. the yeah. food probably Damn. it really did it, it's a, just a one big mystery it's it just is. one big mystery and i really hope i so much hope that the dna research that they're gonna yeah. do has positive results exactly. that we can finally rest this case because it's a mystery since 1948. It is. It's oh. damn. It's a long time. Yeah. He could. Wow. That would be great if they actually. Yeah. I know. Solve this. What the hell? I know America and Australia had a good connection after World War II. Mm-hmm. There, there was a sort of uh, fraternal bond. Mm-hmm. I I just listened to a podcast about it. There was a fraternal bond, I believe, between the Australian infantry and the American Marines. They sort of fought in the same theaters. They never fought together, but they had a close yeah, experience, and which meant that a lot of Australian soldiers, once they were on leave or they had time off, 
spend it with American soldiers and they always had a really good fraternal bond. Mm -hmm. And America, after World War II, had a few bases in Australia, they still do, I believe. And there was always an American presence in Australia, so the, the, the ties between America and Australia has always been good. Yeah. So that could be that could also sort of explain why, and yeah, if an, an outspoken American, such as as believed, you know, Senator Man was, they could also explain why he would be in Australia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I feel like the theory of him being a spy is the most plausible. I mean... Do you it's... want it to be the most plausible? Do you want it to be a spy? And because that will make the story so James Bond-esque, to mm, be honest? Not necessarily, but I just feel like why I think that is the most plausible theory is because, well, one, it has been a world, like a, a world-wide known case. Yeah. Um, and there has been literally no one who's been like, oh my god, I think it's him. Like a few the uh, names that you mentioned, but this all been quickly mm -hmm. denied. Yeah. The one, the people who did, well, like, were asked, like, do you know this man? We're like, no, 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 I don't know. I don't you mean know like Jessica like, then? Like Jessica. Yeah. So it was just him, no family, no name. He, he is. A few possessions. It was, he was traveling. There is so much known about this case. War. There is so much that can be certain. Mm -hmm. And there is still is not much known about this case. It's such a bizarre case. And who are the most secretive, secretive people in the world? Well, there's two people who are, two types of people who yeah. are very secretive, spies mm -hmm. and con men. Yeah. <laughs> con men. Exactly. I don't think he's a con man, they still have family, so, but... I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, uh, no, nothing's known about this case. Yeah. Any last things about the Man? No. I, no. I, I, I don't know. I think I'll probably give it some more thought after this yeah I, I mean i think that in the following year while they investigate i will mm -hmm. be following up on this because yeah. that's kind of the person i am mm -hmm. but <laughs> i just i don't know i will be thinking about this and i think we'll see in a year maybe if we do uh, yeah hopefully a part two episode on this uh, or maybe i don't really believe maybe it could be a part two but they really should figure out a lot of information mm -hmm. in a short time then yeah. um, I probably think that will be one of the episodes in the future will just say oh an update about the Summerton man okay just I don't I, th this won't be possible I think because I just said I will be following up on the research but imagine a, in a year from now I tell my theories in the next episode and you say exactly what happened so when the case is solved you know the case is solved yeah. i don't know what is what has happened yet like yeah. i did like for this case i did not research anything about yeah so we do that again so i come up with my own theory yeah and then you say what actually happened ah okay you see, you know what so you mean we'll make a, a short recap episode yeah. and i'll just describe the case in short i'll mm -hmm. ask you so ray what do you think happened yeah you'll say your theory what happened yeah. and i'll say actually what really happened was and then i'll tell yeah. you what happened exactly i don't really i don't know if it's possible i don't think it's possible i think both of us will be looking at yeah very exactly closely. i feel like i will be looking at this closely yeah it would be cool though <laughs> anyway i believe everything i said should be correct i believe that's I didn't make any mistake. However, I if I did make a mistake or did I, if I left something very important out, could always have been the case. Be sure to let us know. I think if we're talking bullshit, you should call us out on our bullshit. <laughs> so contact us. And how could people contact us, Ray? Well, Lawrence, what a good question you asked there. <laughs> you can contact contact us. Um, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. 
on They Come Before Dawn before with BFR on Twitter. Yeah. But you can also send us an email, they come for Don Pod at gmail.com. <laughs> We're mostly active on Instagram. Uh, yeah. A bit on Twitter. Uh, a little bit on Facebook. I'll, sta- Facebook. I'll start using Twitter more as a. You, you're more a Twitter person. Yeah. Than more I'll, I'll start using Twitter more as a. Perfect. Lawrence has made another mistake. Here's yeah. a correction. <laughs> Obviously. Yo, I can make mistakes too. Yeah, you, can. I don't, you haven't yet, but... I don't know, no one has pointed out one, but... Yeah? No one. No one, no, because so obviously you're just perfect and perfect. you don't make any mistakes. Yeah, Philip. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm not. <laughs> so, anyway, dear listeners, thank you all for listening. And Are I'll, we gonna give a tip, though? A tip? tip? Tip of the... A tip? Week? What do you mean, tip of the week? As like in, a, a book, a series. Oh, oh, you mean a recommendation? A recommendation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now um, we are talking about okay. true crime. Yeah? You have a recommendation? I have a recommendation. It's a YouTube channel hosted by Bailey Sarian. And she does murder, mystery, and makeup monsters. And then she does the little... Okay, but anyway. Wait, is she do, what, what, she, what does she do? So she talks about true crime cases while doing her makeup. Okay. And it's super interesting because she like tells you about the case in something between 40 and 60 minutes. Mm-hmm. But she does it in such a way... Like she she's a genius in my opinion. She does it in such a good way. She talks so it's like you're talking to her Mm -hmm. like it's not as if you're listening to a um documentary or whatever or watching a documentary you're it's like you're both in the room and she's like doing her makeup for the night you know Mm -hmm. and you're just waiting for her to get ready and she's like talking to you it's that kind of vibe and it's it's amazing so that's my recommendation so youtube youtube bailey sarian that is spelled bailey B A I L E Y. B A I L E Y. Sarian is S A R I A N. Bailey Sarian. Okay. She has 5 million subscribers. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you're so, interested in that. She's good. Okay. She's good. So. That was my recommendation. Did you have a recommendation? Oh, we're gonna, gonna do each. Oh, uh, not necessarily. No, but I thought you were gonna say just. Okay. We'll use it for next time. Okay. Well, thanks, dear listeners. Thank you for listening. Thank you for um, actually hosting. Oh, this it's solo. yeah, <laughs> it's a solo host. It was exactly. Yeah, perhaps in the future we'll we'll do this format more, or maybe we'll just do it as a sometimes as a few. Like, it depends on the case. You have you have the things that you're very interested yeah. in, and it would be cool if you had a subject that you found so super interesting mm-hmm. that you want me to be completely in the dark. Exactly. So we could switch the roles. We could try yeah. it again. Like some this. some um, cases are more interesting to for both of us to yeah. research on. Yeah. Like it has worked really well. Yeah. But this case was indeed kind of like it, it fitted that only one person. Yeah. I I believe so as well. And if we were to ever do a episode on, for example, Norse uh, mythology, then uh, this would be a similar one because you can do all the research, which you already know, and I would just listen. (laughs) Okay, okay, that's a good. You don't don't make me out to be a Norse mythology expert. I just know a bit about it. (laughs) But you're passionate about it. I'm passionate about it. That's that's good. (laughs) Okay. Anyways, thanks everyone. Thanks for listening. See you in the next one. Good night. Bye. On the next episode of They Come Before Dawn. A strange box, sealed with wax, supposedly housing a demon. Never open the box for when you do, the demon is released. Where does this legend come from? Who is this demon? And why can you find these boxes on eBay? In the next episode, We talk about Dibbit Boxes.